What up and welcome to the first proper car cleaning guru video of 2018. Today I'll be tackling the 25 year old forsaken interior of my sister's Nissan Figaro to hopefully breathe a bit of life back into its quirky albeit tired toy town features. Being owned by a sibling who has little to no interest in detail in them, I had to be realistic with this one. Yes, its cutesy charm draws plenty of attention, but it's far from a perfect example, and so would be a, a fruitless endeavour striving for perfection. However, that didn't mean I couldn't give it a good spruce up while simultaneously capturing some footage for you, so that's exactly what I did. Aside from plenty of deeply ingrained dirty leather, I also had dog hairs, sand, scuffs and even the odd sticky skittle to contend with which I hoped would all be sorted or at least improved with a thorough vacuum, some light upholstery cleaning, a basic leather rejuvenation, a detailed dress of most surfaces and a straightforward glass clean. Being a miniature motor, I went with a smaller pneumatic Henry machine to vacuum, its trunk being mated to a crevice tool and soft dusting brush. The aim here was simply to suck up as much loose debris as possible from all interior surfaces to make the subsequent deep cleaning slightly easier. I used the soft brush tool to gently remove dust and debris from various nooks and crannies of which there were a fair few in this quirky car, while the crevice tool is generally reserved for use on the carpets and upholstery. The front carpets were pretty heavily worn and discoloured from years worth of filthy footsie and I know from experience that attempting to properly extract vintage examples like these can often leave them looking worse. So after vacuuming I simply pre-sprayed them with a bulk upholstery cleaner from AutoSmart, worked them over with a stiff bristle brush and gave them a final once over with the Henry. A steam cleaner or compressed air powered tornador tool would likely achieve the best results if you were truly looking to turn them around, but unless I was to fall short in attending to the other areas I had to leave it at that. The mats will cover most of the mankiness and the car isn't likely to be maintained from here on in so you'll have to forgive me for not wanting to overexert myself. Vacuuming complete, it was then time to tackle the lacklustre leather using some gentle supernatural cleaner from Dodo Juice and a soft bristled interior detailing brush. Once liberally sprayed directly onto the cream coloured surface, it was thoroughly worked in with the detailing brush to help release any ingrained grime before being wiped over with a dry microfiber towel to remove the encapsulated dirt and excess soapy residue.
When attending to the front seats, a little extra attention was paid to the seams where years worth of grime and antique backside debris had unfortunately accumulated. The top parts of the front seats and their headrests, on the other hand, seem to be contaminated with another kind of stubborn brown residue which refused to budge with either a leather cleaner and stiff bristled brush or an all-purpose cleaner and a magic eraser, and not wanting to rub right through the most likely unprotected leather, I decided to let these areas soak under a wet towel and revisit them later off-camera. When I did, I was hit with the unmistakable aroma of nasty old nicotine and so suspected pipe or cigar smoke as cigarettes usually leave more of a yellow residue behind in my experience and an eccentric pipe smoker would fit perfectly with a quirky old car like this. Once I'd spent a couple of hours on the leather seats, both on camera and off, it was time to tackle the other parts of the cabin using some total interior cleaner from Auto Finesse. The sterile smelling product was sprayed directly onto each of the surfaces to be cleaned before being wiped over with a fresh microfiber towel. Any heavier areas of contamination that wouldn't come off with just a towel were attended to with either a stiff bristled brush to get into the grain or a magic eraser which quickly lifts off stubborn scuffs. While the abrasive nature of magic erasers 
can potentially cause irreversible damage. At this point in a car's life where the dirt and grime is so ingrained and at one with the surface, it's very often the only thing that works. Gently removing a small amount of the surface colour and taking the ingrained dirt with it, similar to how you debrade away faded single stage paintwork on the exterior of a neglected car with a machine polisher, also helps to noticeably brighten the interior in a way that a simple surface clean never could. They're obviously not something you want to be deploying on a well kept car, but on an older interior of this colour they're invaluable. Following a quick rinse out, the same soft brush used to clean the leather was used to work the total interior cleaner into the various nooks and crannies of the figure as best as possible. Again, if this was a full on restorative detail then a steam cleaner or tornador would uh, be the best option for blowing grime out from these types of awkward areas. But a quick tickle with the brush and a wipe over with a towel would have to do for this family freebie. Once I felt everywhere had been given as good a clean as possible within the given time frame, I moved on to finishing off the main surfaces using some 303 aerospace protectant. The water based dressing which is designed to enhance and protect all surfaces from the harmful effect of the sun was liberally sprayed directly onto the surface then thoroughly buffed over with a fresh towel to simultaneously work it into the grain and remove any excess residue to give as natural finish as possible. Now, you're not really supposed to dress leather, but once old, unprotected and neglected hide like this has been given a deep clean, it can become tacky, dull and lifeless. Therefore, I find an all-encompassing solution like this is the most efficient and realistic way to finish it all off without spending hours sealing or conditioning subpar leather that won't thank you for it. Yes, you'll have a bit of a sheen on your seats and it might feel slightly slippery on the backside for a few days, but that's the price you pay for either letting your leather get in such a state or buying a car in that kind of condition. Following the somewhat tedious deep cleaning, it's probably the most satisfying part of a job like this for me, as the self-doubt surrounding what the heck you've been doing for the past 4 or 5 hours slowly fades, as you see each individual part finally coming together to form a far more acceptable whole.
Once all areas had been dressed and buffed then, it was time to tend to the glass and remaining shiny bits that were now caked in overspray with some good old green glass clear from AutoSmart. The windows were liberally spritzed with the product before being worked over with a pair of lint-free glass cleaning cloths to keep smears and bits to a minimum. However, it's difficult to obtain a proper finish when the outside is still dirty, so I just went through my usual basic glass cleaning routine, knowing that despite not being perfect, it'd still be a lot better than it looked to begin with. The final few shiny bits were then wiped over with the glass cleaner, this time using a more conventional microfiber towel to leave them looking bright, smear and fingerprint free. Once everywhere had been given a last once over with Henry off camera, the floor mats were finally tended to. The smaller two were given a thorough vacuum with the crevice tool as they weren't really too bad, but the slightly more soiled front pair were given a bit more of a thorough going over, similar to how the carpets were dealt with.
and with around half an hour left to capture some aftershots and record a cringy conclusion before it got dark, I had no choice but to call it a day there. Still, 8 hours of my time was probably far more than this neglected little Nissan deserved if I'm honest. A full day's cleaning off camera would obviously warrant a superior outcome, but with this particular clean being complimentary, unless the car was an absolute minter, it would have been a waste of time and energy in many respects. Nevertheless, the Toy Town interior looked a damn sight better for its deep clean, and I still think I can safely say that I achieved my goal of breathing a bit of life back into it. Even at this time of year it now looked fresh, bright and airy, and uh, most of the quirky design features despite being inflicted with characterful patina still shone through. In an ideal world, once you get things to an acceptable base standard like this, you then keep on top of it with regular maintenance cleaning, and as you do it should come out a little better each time as you progressively play catch up with 25 years worth of neglect. So, while I understand a car like this won't appeal to everyone, I still thought it was worth featuring, as there isn't many about, and still to this day, they're pretty unique in terms of looks, both inside and out. Figaro a finito, or as close to finito as I can bother making uh, a family freebie on a freezing February Friday. Cheers for tuning in all the same and I'll hopefully see you again soon with something slightly more macho.